this is the uh, the nursery. As you uh, you probably know, Lindsay and I are uh, having our first child in just a few months, and it's definitely been a weird time to be having your first child. Not exactly the year we expected, but uh, uh, I've been working very hard over the last few weeks or a month on getting this room ready, uh, ready for the baby, turning it into a you know a nursery, and so. This is going to be a Winnie the Pooh themed room, as you can tell, and it's also a room you should not use for podcasting. This is probably an example of the worst possible room in your house you could choose for podcasting. It is completely empty except for one lamp. We have hardwood floors, the walls are bare, the closet is bare, there's no curtains. Um, this is a completely empty room. And so what you're hearing right now is room reverb. This is echo, and this is the kind of phasing that happens in a, uh, in a typical house. So this is what happens when people record uh, podcasts in their house. Now this is a serious exaggeration, right? It's never this bad. Usually there's at least something carpet, some furniture, couches, right? Curtains, there's something to suck up some of the, uh, some of the echo, some of the reverb, some of the reflections. But what I wanted to do here is talk about the worst possible tool that you could reach for when you're editing a podcast that sounds like this, which is a noise gate. That's right, everybody in the podcasting forums loves to talk about noise gates. Anytime someone posts a, a question and says, oh, you know, I, I, uh, I, I got this audio from my co-host or I was recording and I ended up with all this echo, this room reverb, and uh, what do I do? Right, and some, but there's always a, a half dozen or a dozen responses that all say you need to use a noise gate. No, this is a very bad choice of tool for this particular problem. And in this video, I'm gonna show you why. Uh, we need to do a little test recording. So I've got the Shure SM58 right here plugged into my Zoom H5. So let's say I was doing everything right, right? I was I was eating the mic just like you, uh, just like I always teach you how to do. And I've got my gain set, so I'm peaking between negative nine and negative 12 dB, just like I always teach you. And I'm just gonna do a little test, here we go. Well, here we are in Studio One. I've got a small clip from uh, from the other room pulled up here. Let's listen to it completely raw and then talk about noise gates and why they're a bad choice to deal with this particular problem and what tools you could use to uh, to attack it better. Let's listen. And I've got my gain set, so I'm peaking between negative nine and negative 12 db just like i always teach you and i'm just gonna do a little test here we go okay so this would be a terrible choice as we've already talked about you would not want to record in a room like this but even though you know better i know you know better because you listen to me because you come to these tutorials because you know you shouldn't be in a room that's that echoey when you're recording sometimes you have a co-host maybe a guest that doesn't know that and they send you this file and it is Awful. It's got all these reflections, all this echo, all this background noise swirling around, and you don't know what to do. But you think, I'm going to use a noise gate, because background noise, noise gate, this is probably it, right? Well, no. It's a very, very bad tool for this particular uh, circumstance, uh, which is, I think, counterintuitive to most people. See, a noise gate only does two things. It opens or it closes. That's it. It exists in no other states. So all it's doing is letting in the entire signal when it's open and letting no none of the signal in when it's closed, right? There's no in-between. There's no halfway. There's no a little bit. There's no a lot. So it's not actually going to do you any good for the background noise, which in this case is reverb. Because again, like that background noise isn't really noise. It was part of the sound room reverb is is acoustic it's real it's not it's not like a bird chirping in the background that you didn't want there or a fan kicking on like it's really a part of the sound and so listen to what happens if i put a basic noise gate on we're going to listen with it off one once through and then listen with it on in particular pay attention to the spots in between the words right there in the middle and I've got my gain set, so I'm peaking between negative 9 and negative 12 dB, just like I always teach you, and I'm just going to do a little test. Here we go. And I've got my gain set, so I'm peaking between negative 9 and negative 12 
db, just like I always teach you, and I'm just gonna do a little test. Here we go. Could you hear what the noise gate did right here in the middle? It completely stopped any audio from coming in in between the words, which is distracting. See, what happens when you use a noise gate is it actually draws the listener's attention to the fact that there's processing. The goal of audio processing, and usually the goal of video processing as well, is to let the listener, let the viewer be absorbed in the content, to let the content shine through. What you don't want to do is something that's going to make them think about the editing, think about the processing. And when you've got this voice that's going and you hear the room reverb and the echo, and it's a little annoying, but no big deal, right? But then all of a sudden it just completely clamps down in between the words. When that happens, your brain goes, what was that? That wasn't natural. And that's the point. When you hear it, your brain registers, it's not natural. Something's been done to this audio and it completely takes you out of the experience. It disconnects you from the audience, right? It disconnects you from the listener. So listen again without it and notice how even though there's a huge amount of echo and reverb that you and I really don't like to hear, Notice how even after a few seconds, your brain starts to tune it out. It just ignores it. And then on the second time through with the gate on, notice how much you end up paying attention to the editing itself. Listen. And I've got my gain set, so I'm peaking between negative 9 and negative 12 dB, just like I always teach you. And I'm just going to do a little test. Here we go. And I've got my gain set, so I'm peaking between negative 9 and negative 12 db just like i always teach you and i'm just gonna so again your brain notices that something's happening and it clicks in and it stops focusing on the content which is not our goal now if you're not going to use a gate because again i think honestly you're better off not doing anything to the audio than using a gate when it comes to trying to treat room reverb or reflections or echo because it's so distracting I'd rather just listen to the raw audio and let the listener's brain, our brains are amazing. They have the ability to hyper-focus. Like uh, there's something called the cocktail effect, which is cocktail party. It's really loud. There's tons of people and they're all talking. It's like that deafening, you know, cacophony of conversation. And someone halfway across the room says your name. In spite of all that noise, you can always hear your own name. Our brains are able to focus, hyper-focus on things that they want to. And so, believe it or not, if you just leave this echo alone, the listener, if the content is compelling, will just start to filter it out themselves. I just smashed into the uh, the, the boom arm here. I, the, I, hope, I hope you didn't hear that. So, if you wanted to treat this, though, and you didn't want to use a gate, what might you use? Well, you might use an expander. An expander is like a gate that works slowly. So instead of only existing open or closed, an expander takes a little while to open and then it takes a little while to close. Now, I'm not gonna go through how to set this up. It's, uh, it's not the easiest thing in the world to set up. But let me show you with the expander on what happens. You'll notice it's a gate. Again, like it's going to either let things through or not let them through, but it takes a while. There's this gradual in-between phase that makes it a little bit less aggressive. So listen. And I've got my gain set, so I'm peaking between negative nine and negative 12 dB, just like I always teach you, and I'm just gonna do a little test. Here we go. All right, let me make it a little bit slower to kick in and see if that makes it a little bit less obvious. And I've got my gain set, so I'm peaking between negative nine and negative 12 db just like i always teach you and i'm just gonna do okay so it's still you know it's uh, let's see let's uh, let's back off the threshold see here's the thing when you have that much reverb that much echo there's not a lot that you can do that's really helpful when it comes to the traditional tools let's let's reduce it by less so it, it was reducing uh the silences to like mine by minus 12 by 12 decibels which is a huge amount. So let's just do minus six. So it's only going to, when it notices silence, it's only going to get six decibels lower, uh, which is about twice as quiet. And I've got my gain set. So I'm peaking between negative nine and negative 12 dB, just like I always teach you. And I'm just going to. Okay. So that was actually not as bad because I was able to control how much it was clamping down. See, 
Again, with the noise gate, it's either all the way open or all the way closed. But here I set the range to only do six decibels of silence reduction. So don't go completely silent. Don't go digital silent because digital silence is that unnaturalness that we hear that alerts us to the processing. But no, 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 just do six decibels. Just make it half as loud, but not completely off. And that sounds... And I've got my gain set, so I'm peaking between negative 9 and negative 12 dB, just like I... You know, that's that's not half bad in this case. And I think this recording is being served by the fact that in spite of all that reverb and echo, I was using a cardioid dynamic mic right up on my mouth. So I, even though I was in a, a, a completely untreated room in an area I should never have been in to record a podcast or a narration or voiceover using a cardioid mic, using a dynamic mic and having, and basically eating the mic, this is going to go a long way into uh, just making a bad room not quite as bad when it comes to editing. But then there are more interesting options that usually are not free. Gates, expanders, you'll find these for free in basically every digital audio workstation or editing software. Uh, but what if you wanted to use a D-Reverb plugin? Well, a D-Reverb is just what it sounds like. Now, this is an algorithm designed to filter out the reverb, the reflections, not to deal with the overall audio, but it's actually supposed to filter the stuff out. So whereas a gate and an expander are working on the entire audio source as one, this is just supposed to be figuring out what's reverb, what's not, and getting rid of the reverb. So let's listen with the uh, the D-verb from SPL. I have no affiliation. I bought this on my own probably about a year ago uh, to deal with when I have guests on the podcast that occasionally have way too much uh, echo uh, reverb in their uh, recordings. It served me well. Let's do it off all the way through and then on all the way through. And I've got my gain set, so I'm peaking between negative nine and negative 12 dB, just like I always teach you. And I'm just gonna do a little test. Here we go. And I've got my gain set, so I'm peaking between negative nine and negative 12 dB, just like I always teach you. And I'm just gonna do a little test. Here we go. See, that was much, much better than the gate or even the expander because it didn't just eliminate some of the reverb, some of the echo in between the uh, the words. It did it throughout the passage, throughout the entire passage. Listen, listen just to the first passage by itself off and then on. And I've got my gain set, so I'm peaking between negative nine and negative. And I've got my gain set, so I'm peaking between negative nine and negative. Did you hear how much cleaner that passage was with the uh, with the D reverb on? Okay, so you could go to a D reverb. And finally, let's turn that off. Our last option is a denoising plugin. Now, this is a very expensive plugin. This is a professional grade audio repair tool. I use this plugin on almost everything when it comes to podcast narration voiceover it eliminate it, it, it does such an incredible job of isolating just the voice itself and getting rid of anything else little bit of low grade hum from the microphone or the the audio chain computer fan background noise birds chirping uh, heaters baseboard heaters kicking in it just goes what's the voice and anything else gone so listen off and then on with this, uh, with this uh, voice denoiser. And I've got my gain set, so I'm peaking between negative nine and negative 12 dB, just like I always teach you, and I'm just gonna do a little test. Here we go. And I've got my gain set, so I'm peaking between negative nine and negative 12 dB, just like I always teach you, and I'm just gonna do a little test. Here we go. And that is a fantastic tool. Now, uh, the, I just give you four options here. The first option, a gate, I would say, if that's the only option you have available to you, just don't use anything. Just work with the EQ, work with some subtractive EQ, try to find where the reverb is worse in the worst, worst where it's the worst in the recording and use some EQ to carve it out. I've taught subtractive EQ here on the channel. I also teach it in my audio 101 for content creators course in great detail. So subtractive EQ, I would use that instead of a noise gate. But 
if you wanted to try to deal with it, you could use an expander uh, to be a little bit less aggressive. Then next best from there, I would look into a, uh, a dereverb plugin. And if you could only spend money on a single plugin for podcast narration, voiceover, general content creation, I would go for broke and get, uh, this is from Isotope uh, RX7, the voice denoising plugin. And uh, again, I have nothing, I just smashed into the mic again. I have no affiliation, no relationship with uh, uh, Ozone Isotope um, with this company. Those are all those weird words I just said. That's this company. I have no affiliation, but if I could only spend my money on one plugin for doing podcasting or content creation in general, it'd probably be this. It has gotten me out of so many tight spots. Having said that, I hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you want me to dive in deeper to any of these particular uh, plugins or tools, if you want to learn more about how gates work or how to set up an expander, um, anything else about dereverb or denoising, I'm happy to, uh, to entertain if you're interested. Let me know in the comments. And having said that, my name is Brian Miller. Thanks so much for tuning in to Audio for Content Creators, where we help you sound better and level up. And we'll see you soon.